Hey, what's up? It's Anthony here at Lander, and in this video, you're going to learn how to take your MIDI strings from this to this. You can hear they're more expressive, more realistic, and they have tons more emotion. Let's get started. So when composers are writing for strings, they're usually using a paid sample library. And there are a ton of paid sample libraries out there, but in this video I'll be using BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover since it's the best free orchestral plugin you can get right now. Download it and follow along with the video. The string family can play tons of different techniques and articulations like legato and long passages and short passages and tremolo and short passages and f The string family can play tons of different articulations and techniques like tremolo, pizzicato, spiccato, and long. But in this video, I'm gonna be focusing mostly on the long passages since those are the hardest to make sound the most realistic. I have them set up from highest sound to lowest sound, so the violins are gonna be playing the higher melodic notes, and I have them selected here. The violin, the second violins are gonna be playing more of a supportive role. They're gonna be playing just under the first violins. So they'll be playing some harmony. The violas are gonna be playing some counter melody and they sit just below the second violins. The cello are gonna be playing similar to what the basses are playing. They can often play a bit more complex passages than the bass. And then finally, the bass is gonna hold the foundation for the music and they're gonna play the lowest notes. So the best way to start writing for strings is to have a chord progression to work with. My chord progression is C minor. And you can see I have a bass note, root, third, fifth. Then I have B flat, sus two, and then F minor. So what most producers might do is just drag the piano progression to the strings patch, and then you get this type of sound. So that sounds okay, but it's not very realistic, and it holds little emotion compared to what we can really do with BBC Orchestra Discover and other paid libraries. So the way I like to have my tracks set up is to have one instance of the orchestral plugin per string section. So what I like to do is take my piano track and then copy it to each section of the strings, and then I can begin to remove any of the notes that I don't need based on the role of the instrument. So bass notes will only have the lower notes, the violin one will only have the high notes of the progression. So I'll just do that here. Here's my bass passage. So I want those notes. I'm gonna select everything else and just delete them. Same with my cellos. They're gonna be playing the same notes. So I can just go like this and delete everything else. The violas are going to be playing the octave up. So I can get rid of that. And then I'll get rid of the two higher notes that the violins will be playing. Then I can go to my violin too. You can see where this is going. I'm just gonna select the ones that I don't need. These are the ones for the first violin. So I can go like that. Almost there. And there we go. Then the first violins, I can get rid of everything except for the top notes. Perfect. So now that each instrument's covering their parts, I can go in and edit the MIDI notes based on the role of the instrument. So remember the violin is usually gonna play the top notes, which they are, but they're usually gonna play the melody. So I'm just gonna make a melody in C minor. I like where this is starting, but I think I'd rather have the notes go up for the melody. So I'm just going to... So C minor, we have C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. So I can go from G, B flat, and just see what that sounds like. I think I wanna keep that going up a little bit too. And then go up again and see what happens. I love writing like this because you can just try stuff out and see if it works with your ear. Yeah, and I think that works great. I'm going to get rid of this and just copy and paste it. So the violin has the highest notes. It carries the melody, which is great. The second violin, I said we covered more of the harmony. So I'm going to do that by just placing thirds on top of the original passage I have here, and it's gonna thicken up the sound a bit. 
So E flat, G, C, E flat, and A flat, C. Let's see what that sounds like. Perfect, I love it. So now the violas usually have the counter melody and right now they're playing the same thing the cello and the bass are playing, but up an octave. So I'm just gonna try to create more of a counter melody that counters the main melody, which is the violin. So that's gonna be up here. And I can see both of them by just clicking and holding shift. So now I have the violins up there and then I have the violas here. And I want them to play something a little bit different than the cello and the bass. So let's see, maybe if I end up, I can highlight that F minor chord there. Just see what that sounds like. And how about just them two together? So again, I'm just using the C minor scale to try and mimic the melody in a counter melody type of way. So I have it moving down. I mean, the original bass notes were moving down, but less of a stepwise motion. So now I have it moving down in a smaller, more stepwise motion, and it adds a lot of interest to the movement of the line. I'm just gonna get rid of that and then copy this over. I really like that. And then I have the cello and the bass playing the same thing. Let's see if the bass can go down an octave. I have no idea if they can or not. Is that too? I think they can. But now it's switched to spiccato for some reason, so I'm just going to switch it back. Now you get that big bass sound. Yeah, nice. It's really mean. <laughs> So now that I have all the notes placed based on the role of the instrument, I can begin to adjust some parameters to add to the realism of all of these instruments. And those parameters are in BBC Orchestra Discover here, expression and dynamics. And with the paid libraries, you're gonna get more parameters to adjust, which is gonna to contribute to more realism. But for free, you can ask for more, this is amazing. So we have dynamics and that's gonna be like loud or soft. So it's really soft, this is loud. And then expression, it kind of hints towards vibrato, but it's more of the expression of the whole note itself. And I'll just play it so you can hear what I mean. So you can hear it rolls off a lot of highs, so they're kind of distant. So it's adjusting these parameters over time that's gonna to contribute to the realism of these strings. And we can do that with MIDI CC messages. If I right click each parameter, you can see the MIDI CC channel, it's on MIDI CC one for the dynamics and MIDI CC11 for the expression. And I can adjust those in the piano roll just below here. So I can go to here and then MIDI control. So the one, and then I can hold command and just draw in some automation that will move that parameter for me. And I'm gonna draw almost like waves for each note because that's gonna emulate the bow going across the strings. And sometimes they'll go slow and then faster and then slow and fast going back up. So once I do that to all the strings, you'll really hear how more realistic it sounds all together. I'll go and change the expression. So I can draw a similar curve. It doesn't have to be identical, but I'm gonna draw it very similar and then adjust it based on what I hear. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this to all the strings. So I went ahead and did it for every string section. And this is what I have. And I just soloed the strings. This is with the automation. And then without. So you can tell the one with, with automation sounds more realistic. There's a bit of a wave to it and the energy, which is adding to the realism. So now that I have those parameters going by, the last step is to put them all in the same room together. So you'll see in BBC Orchestra Discover, there's a reverb dial here. Now that's gonna put each section in its own room 
just with the section, but I want all the sections to live together in the same room. So to do that, I'm going to create a bus and send all of the strings to that bus, then put a reverb on it. So I'll do that by going to options, create new auxiliary channel strip. And then I'm going to just send each one to that bus. So bus one. So I have all the strings sent to a bus and then I've loaded a reverb on it, which is tal reverb and they're all gonna be going through to the reverb. So if I solo this track, I can open up the reverb and begin to shape the reverb. And I'm just gonna add an EQ to cut off some of the higher frequencies that might be bouncing around too fast and adding a bit of noise. So just grab an EQ and just cut that. And then just cut some of the low end as well. And then when I blend this in, it's gonna add to the realism. Here's my strings, all of them together, and then I can blend in the reverb using this fader. Let's listen to it, just, just the strings. This is without the reverb, and then with the reverb. So that's it. I hope this video was useful in helping you create more lush, realistic strings. Be sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell below to be notified when we come up with new videos like this one.